Hi guys, this is David Coleman from WP Mare. Today we're going to look at a WordPress plugin called Smart Footer System. This is a feature rich plugin that allows you to make unlimited custom footers for your site. Here's their website. You can view a main demo. The plugin can be purchased through Code Canyon. It offers six types of footers, lots of features, it's fully responsive works with third-party page builders, has over 70 different styles, works with WooCommerce. It automatically detects your theme post types, works mobily, includes animation, and the ability to show and hide your footers. Now, with version 2, they just came out with a new graphic interface and pre-made template footers. And like I said, it's compatible with most page builders. 100% responsive. It includes many other features such as auto hide, auto show, auto open. It comes with documentation, support, and a change log to see the newest features. Now they include a demo that shows their different footer types in action. Normal, reveal, slide up, banner, CSS3, and accordion. That's six different footer modes. And all you have to do is click on one of these thumbnails to view the footer in action. So let's go ahead and click on slide up two. And then once you scroll down to the bottom, it'll give you a demo of that footer. Looks pretty nice. Has animation. Now you can put whatever media you wish into these footers. Like I said, they have a change log with the latest features and fixes. Your documentation comes on one page and it's nicely laid out and clear. I think they did a good job with their documentation. Their support system includes a support ticket and article base. You can buy it through Code Canyon. Right now the regular license is $16. For $4.50 you can get extended 12 months. Has a nice 5 star rating and it lists all the different custom post types that it will automatically detect. The different footer types and features. Let's look at installing Smart Footer System and the included demo templates. So you want to go to Plugins, Add New, click Upload Plugin, Choose File. Now we're going to look for the Code Canyon zip file. Click Choose. Install Now. And this failed because mine's already installed, but you would activate it after that. Now to load the demo templates, go to Settings. And in the Import Export footer section, where it says Import Demos, click the Import Demos button. And after a few seconds, I've already done this, you'll have a list of 24 footer posts that you can go in and edit. Now let's look at accordion footer one. As you can see we have visual composer and as we said before you can edit with most third-party page builder plugins. Let's take a look at the smart footer system sidebar menu. The footers submenu lists all of your footers whether you've created them yourself or you imported demo material. You can filter by dates you can edit with third-party page builders or the visual HTML WordPress editor. Now you click the Add New Footer button to create your footers. And right now we have Visual Composer activated. Let's deactivate that right temporarily to see what it looks like without Visual Composer. And also I have Thrive Visual Editor. Let's deactivate that as well. Tiny MCE Advance is a good plugin you might want to install and activate because it gives you options to change your font sizes and it's something that will give you a little more power with the smart footer system. So let's go back in. To add your new footer you want to put in your title, your content underneath, and then you have settings for your footer underneath the editor. Your backgrounds, you can choose your footer type among the six different types. And then you just hit save footer. Now let's look at the settings submenu. You can hide your theme footer and you can also do it manually if you need to. And here's some third-party compatibility options. Now this is where you set globally which footer you're going to have for your home page. And same thing with your blog page. 
And these can be overrun through the WordPress editor. Single post footer, pages, media, portfolio, and third party posts. Archive footers for post pages. Media, portfolio, and again, third party posts. And WooCommerce compatibility is built in for your shop page, my account page, your cart page, your checkout page, single products and archive products. And you can import footer information. You can also export footer information. And as you saw before, you can import demos. Support is built in to the user interface and it takes you to their site and you need to click documentation here. They also have support through a ticket system and articles as we saw before and again the change log. Now this is all built into the user interface which is nice. Let's look a little closer at how to create a new footer. So from the sidebar menu click add new footer and you want to enter your title this is for internal use and then your content below it and then you have your settings underneath and of course you want to click publish so let's go to a footer that I've already created and take a look at that test footer normal and again your title is for internal use and here's the content and the footer settings underneath include background content, the image size options, position options, and if you want to repeat or not your background image, background content color and overlay colors, border options, as you can see I'm not using any borders, padding options for the content within the editor for WordPress, including desktop, tablet, and mobile options. Again, the padding will affect the content for the WordPress visual text editor. Display options, you can hide it on your desktop or hide on your tablet or mobile. Advanced options include custom CSS. And then we have normal. And options for normal include sticky and shadow. So let's look at what normal looks like. Here's a pretty basic option with the content from the WordPress editor over my background. Let's turn on sticky and see what that does. We'll leave the mobile version off and we'll include a shadow. Click save. Let's go reload the page. And you can see the shadow and with the sticky option the footer is always viewable and the content goes underneath it. So how do we determine what page or post your footer goes on? We'll talk more about this next, but basically what you'll do is go into settings, determine your footer placement through these tabs like we did with our normal footer here, and click Save Changes. Let's look closer at adding footers through the Settings submenu. Besides our normal footer, we've added a reveal footer to our blog page, and on our single post footer page, we have a slide up and a banner on the pages footer. We've added nothing to the archives, but on our WooCommerce singles product page, we added a CSS3 footer. Now that we've assigned our footers, let's go take a look at them. So here's our normal footer, and let's go check out the blog page. And that has our reveal footer. And let's go check out our single post page, which has the slide up footer. These are all very basic as far as the content goes. Again, you can put in any content you want. And here's the slide up content. And if we go take a look at some of the options for it, It can be triggered on a hover or a click. You can set your height. You can have animation, different animation options and speeds. It can automatically open on the scroll at the end of the page. So let's go ahead and close that. Take another look at it. As you can see, it slides up over the content.
nice effect. Now let's go to a single page post. And for that we have the banner footer. And the banner footer can have a button that reveals other content, which is a very nice effect. And let's go to our WooCommerce single product page which has the CSS3 animation. And we'll run it through and see if you can notice the text coming in at a certain angle. And lastly, we have our testimonials page, which we added a accordion footer. We overran the global settings and set this specifically just for this testimonial page. And the way you do that is you turn on the override default smart footer system footer option. You turn that on and that allows you to select a new footer just for that post. And so we're going to go and use our accordion footer. And if you wanted to turn off the plugin for a page or post, this is where you do it. So let's go take a look at our testimonials page. Scroll down to the bottom. And this is the accordion where it pushes the content out of the way. A nice effect. Now let's check out some of the template footers we imported. So let's go and first activate Visual Composer because Visual Composer is compatible with these templates. Now let's add Banner Footer 4 for the home page and Banner Footer 2 for the blog page and save that and check them out. And you can see these are nicely designed and you can edit them any way you wish. Let's check out the blog page. And again, a nice look. Those are banner footers. And now let's go add uh, reveal footer 2 and reveal footer 3. And let's go check out the home page first. Nice design. And let's check out the blog page. So you can put in whatever content you want. Let's add a slide up footer for the home page and a normal footer for the blog page. Click save. Let's check out the home page. And it has a little bar you can click on. And as you can see, you can have video in these banners. And this is pretty impressive. So whatever media you wish to add, close that back up. And let's check out the blog page for the normal footer. It has a border attribute on it. And let's go to the home page and add a CSS animation and an accordion for the blog page. So the home page, you can see it has a text CSS3 animation to it. And the blog page has a accordion with an icon that you click open and it pushes content out of the way to reveal itself. Now let's go add one more footer to the home page, an accordion footer. Let's go check it out. Scroll down, click on the handle and reveal the information. So I wanted to wrap up this demo by talking about the different ways that Smart Footer System lets you create footers. Again, one way is through the use of templates. Another way is through the use of third-party page builders, such as Visual Composer. You can use the WordPress Visual Text Editor as well. And I talked about bringing in a plugin like Tiny MCE Advanced to do things like change your font size. Now remember, you can bring in any type of media with the WordPress editor. And finally, there's the footer settings control panel underneath the editor to change things like backgrounds, padding, both for desktop and mobile.
text, your fonts, titles, subtitles, buttons, colors, icons, hover colors, font sizes, line heights, margins, font weights, lots of options. Now if you're looking to take your WordPress footers to another level, you'll definitely want to check out Smart Footer System. For WP Mayor, I'm David Coleman.